um, a lot of us feeling whiplash and headaches, I'm sure, because just a few months ago, these headlines were very, very different. Um, but what we're seeing is that, you know, there is this trend of people panic moving or either having to move. Again, just as Ashley said, you know, childcare, um, lower commutes, why not go back to your hometown or to a place where you want to vacation um, or a place just with lower costs? Um, core Gen Z is just, they've been hit so hard. I can't imagine a worse time to graduate right now. We're seeing internship programs just completely dissolve. Um, but with, with all this really depressing and scary news, there's also some really bright spots and opportunities. And I think some locations and companies are getting creative about um, how to make the situation better. For example, um, Aldi and McDonald's have done a staff sharing deal where one of the employers said, you know, we have to lay off these workers, unfortunately, but can we have a partnership so that you automatically hire them and that these people are landed in, in jobs that are needed and growing right now? Um, we're also seeing really the desire for people to want to reskill. Um, I know personally, a lot of people who were furloughed or laid off right now who are saying, you know, I didn't really want to be in this career path anyway. So maybe now is the time for me to think of something new. So it's a cool opportunity. If, if you're the community that can kind of be the first to say, if you want to rescale, come here. Um, there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, so these are the trends. Um, and we call these trends, we don't call them data, they're just headlines. And what we want to point out is that for all these headlines, there are two sides to every story. Case in point, um, Wall Street Journal, one of the most reputable outlets out there, um, they're really, they don't tend to be too sensational. Check out these two headlines right here. Um, the first one, remote work could spark housing boom in suburbs. Everyone's going to the suburbs. Second headline, remote workers, they're not gonna love the suburbs. They're, the allure of the suburbs, nope, it's not there. And these are both written by the same reporter just a few weeks apart. So just want to show this to say, you know, everyone is making predictions right now. Um, so keep that in mind and be sure to look at really the numbers, which brings us to our next slide. Um, we want to show you really four key numbers to keep in mind as we show you some marketing tactics today. Um, so the first two numbers at the top, um, these are both related around the work situation we're in right now. Um, as we said at the top of the call, we are all working remotely, different locations. Um, it is a weird time. Uh, about half of people who are unemployed or who are employed right now are having the opportunity to work from home. So half of Americans are working from home right now. Um, do they like it? Do they hate it? Um, the jury is out. We're seeing really conflicting data on this. Um, we see that a lot of majority of people say, I love working from home and I would like to continue this in some capacity, maybe not every day, but in some capacity going forward. Um, so people are liking it. We're seeing that people are saying, I feel more productive. Um, I'm saving costs. I'm saving time on commute. I love more time with the family. But we're also equally seeing that a majority of people are saying, you know, I find this difficult and it would be nice to get back into the office um, at least some of the time. So conflicting um, kind of feedback on that work from home situation. Um, here's what's important. 66% of those say that if work from home continues and is more permanent um, and more set in stone, they are somewhat likely to move. So going back to all the stories we had right now, I think people are testing the waters. As I said, they're checking out places to maybe vacation and hunker down, going back to their hometown, maybe going to someplace cheaper. But it's hard to say that any people are making really concrete decisions right now because so much is unknown. A lot of companies are setting these work from home dates as moving targets. So it's a pretty hard decision to uproot your life and make that change um, if you want to keep your job and if you don't know if that job is going to let you work from home for long term. Um, so those are work preferences, but 
here is um, really the economic reality to keep in mind. The unemployment rate is 13%. Some even argue that this is technically even higher. This is a horrifying number, especially considering that just a few months ago, like four months ago, we were past full employment. So we went from record low unemployment to record high un unemployment in just a matter of months. People desperately need jobs now more than ever. Um, but we are also seeing from the site selection side, the business investment side, that 45% of site selectors say that corporate projects are still going forward. And, and really the takeaway here is that talent decisions, location decisions, job decisions, and corporate decisions are not made overnight. Um, we are seeing that companies are still making plans to expand in different locations. And when they're looking at those locations, they're still keeping in mind the talent factor. So even though now people can work from anywhere, can locate anywhere, site selectors are still thinking, well, I want to make sure we go wherever the talent is. Um, so lots of interesting things going on, even conflicting things. But here is what you can kind of keep in mind. You know, we think regardless of what is going on in the media, in the data, in the news, remember your mission as a place marketer. So whether you are a tourism organization or an economic development organization, there are four things that you can really focus on. Um, first and foremost, remember that your job is to make sure your local employers feel like your location is a sustainable one that can help them get the talent they need to grow. Um, so yes, there are still industries and employers that are hiring right now and still need help finding that talent. So that's your number one audience is giving love to your local employers. Um, on that note too, because you have your ear to the ground, you're hearing from employers on a daily basis, you can really match make across industries. Um, we know people are hurting right now in hospitality and tourism. How can we get them the skills they need? How can we connect them to the companies in our region that are hiring? Um, third here, we see in the data that people are still considering relocation. Um, even Zillow and all these real estate sites, they are seeing record high traffic. So even if people aren't moving right now, they're thinking about it. So making sure that you are saying that your location is open, um, you're safe, you're a great place to live. Um, that's really important right now to really get ahead of the curve and, and know that, let people know that you're open. Um, and that's something that both a tourism organization can do, it's what you do already, you market the place, um, and an economic development organization. Um, and then lastly here, retain talent. Um, we know that when, when people are in hard times, they are willing to go wherever the opportunity is. So make sure you let your locals know that the opportunity is here. Do whatever you can to lend people a helping hand in this, in this time. So with this mission, let's talk about the actual marketing and some tools and tactics. And I'm going to tee up patience um, first to talk about some cool digital tools that um, the digital team has really generated to work in this time to help with that mission that we just talked about. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, so as we mentioned at the top of this, spoiler alert, a lot of this presentation is going to be about digital um, as far as the marketing that you can do right now. Um, but I'm going to walk you through a few um, digital strategies that you can do to, um, to kind of navigate through this time. So obviously, digital tools are hugely valuable as part of talent attraction marketing, and that's pre-COVID. Um, I know for me, I'm on my 14th uh, week of quarantine. I've been personally spending a lot more time online. So in some ways, this is a time to be even more captivate, uh, trying to capture that audience of people who are online. Um, so what can you do to reach talent virtually online right now? Uh, I'm going to talk through three strategies, and then we'll take a look at a few examples. We'll actually go onto a couple websites and play with the tools so you can see how they work. Um, so number one, let's talk about jobs. Um, we know from our national research, talent prioritizes the job over the location. Um, so connecting job seekers with open jobs is job, job number one, um, pre-COVID and during COVID as well. 
Um, the difference now is that talent attraction marketing in the COVID-19 era is all about immediacy. So we're seeing a lot of uh, clients shifting their strategies away from sort of the long game of trying to grow uh, their growth industries like tech, for example. And now they're saying our local employees, our, our local talent are many of them displaced because of COVID-19 and we want to help them get jobs. So they're shifting their focus right now um, to helping those who are unemployed in their regions um, versus necessarily trying to recruit from elsewhere. Um, so that means looking at um, surge industries, essential businesses, um, warehousing and distribution, healthcare, e-commerce, that kind of thing. Um, I'll show you an example in just a minute of a jobs board so you can see what that looks like. Um, second, as Rebecca alluded to, um, now is a really great time to promote upskilling initiatives um, like certificate programs through your local technical schools or any partnerships that you may have between industry and, um, and your schools. Um, the travel and hospitality industry, for one, obviously has taken a really hard hit. Um, and many of those workers who've been laid off may be reevaluating what to do at this point. Um, so this is a time to be promoting um, programs that you know exist or potentially talking uh, with your schools to see what you can do to make happen in the upscaling arena. Um, and then third, obviously people aren't traveling right now for the most part. So finding ways to sell your location digitally is really important. People wanna be able to see if a place firsthand if they're going to consider relocating. Um, and so doing that digitally right now is really um, your sweet spot. Um, and then uh, sort of, of what we were looking at with the headlines uh, and the stats, there are a couple things right now that are pointing to people are relocating. Um, another uh, Wall Street Journal uh, headline uh, that I saw recently, city living is quickly losing its appeal during the pandemic. Uh, so that means suburban and rural locations stand to benefit from that. Um, specifically, you know, people want more space, they want more fresh air, they want you know, fewer people around them that they could possibly catch the virus from. Um, and we did see a, a recent survey from Business Insider said that more than two thirds of companies may be working from home permanently. Um, so again, this trend of people who may no longer ever need to return to the office and how are they evaluating their future? I know I have a friend um, who last week just found out that she never has to return to the office um, and she lives wow. in my neighborhood in, in Brooklyn and you know she's paying 2500 a month for her tiny apartment and she's ready to get the heck out of here like she's already like on Zillow she's looking at markets where she can actually buy a home because she's ready in the next year or so to do that so people are looking um, and really this is this is the time to be promoting um, your region so a couple of things uh, you can do in this realm, um, just a few fun ideas. The first one um, would be, sorry, could you go back to the last slide really quick? Um, the first one would be to launch a quiz to help talent decide where in their community, uh, where in your community they might want to live to kind of paint the picture for them, get them excited. We'll look at an example. The second one would be um, virtual tours um, and either whether that means you creating that, working to create um, video or imagery that paints a virtual tour, or we know many CVBs and tourism organizations already have these resources. So reaching out to them and making sure you're aware of those. And then finally, um, money matters. So painting the cost of living picture right now is a huge one, especially for people in uh, high cost cities who now probably get, you know, get to move where they, they can move right now. So it's a great time to add a cost of living calculator to your site. So let's take a look at a few examples here. Um, this is a jobs board uh, for Northern Virginia. They launched this um, after they launched their site, which promotes, as I mentioned, sort of their more target sectors um, like technology, government jobs, cybersecurity. Um, and the message here is really, we're still hiring. We still have open jobs. Um, so they have this uh, array of employers here, and these are all employers that they've connected with directly that said, you know, we still have jobs open. Um, and then down here, this is the this is the jobs board tech itself. Um, and let's just click on uh, food and beverage. Let's see what the posts look like. So this tool um, pulls results in from Indeed.com, which we know from our research is the top uh, search engine that talent uses to find jobs. Um, so you'll see all of this is pulled in automatically with very little need for upkeep, which is great. Um, but from here, talent can actually go on and apply directly from Indeed. Uh, you're just doing the legwork for them in terms of filtering it by location and making sure that all of the information they need is there. I think that's the key word, patients, is doing the legwork for them, both for employers and for um, talent. And, and something, it's 
you can't do something this designed or something connected to Indeed. Um, something that I've seen um, Baton Rouge Area Chamber do is they just have a running list of, of their chamber members sending them, we're hiring four people in construction. We're hiring 10 people in food and beverage. And it's like, just take the guesswork out of it because that link I was able to send to friends in Baton Rouge who were like, I was just laid off. Any idea of who's hiring, you can send them this link. Um, and they don't have to search on their website and figure out what position. So I, I just love this, making it easy. Yeah, obviously people can go directly to Indeed if they want, but this is the way that you can bring in the location factor for them. And as Rebecca yeah. said, it will work for them. Um, so going on to the next slide, uh, this is just an example from Choose ATL, which is one of my favorite talent attraction programs out there. Um, they're doing something very similar right now. They have a banner on their website promoting COVID-19 resources, and they're promoting gig jobs, um, which are hiring right now. So they have links out to uh, these key employers and their career sites. They also have um, a variety of different resources, including you know, workforce solutions, um, upskilling initiatives, and even things like, here's where you can rent a car if you wanna drive for Uber, if you're unemployed. So they're really, again, taking the legwork out of it and trying to really connect uh, their residents to jobs. Um, and this is just an example, um, again, tying back to sort of the collaboration that we see between sort of the CVB and the EDO worlds. Um, we are seeing since the tourism uh, and hospitality industry has taken such a hit, some really interesting and unique partnerships happening. Um, Hilton is one that is partnering with companies right now to try to find temporary jobs for their displaced workers. So if there are initiatives going on like this that you know of in your community, these are great things to be promoting um, and reaching out and seeing you know, how you can help to get the word out. Um, and this is a quiz, so we're actually going to take this so you can see what this looks like. Um, this is from Jacksonville, Florida. They're a seven-county region, um, so for them, it, it's really important to be able to paint a picture of all the different varieties of lifestyles you can have there. Um, and this one's fun because people are thinking, um, there it is, find your neighborhood. They're thinking about what types of life they want right now. So let's just select my ideal location, suburban, let's say suburban, and then click next. To get around, I like to, let's say, walk or bike. You're not a golf girl, patient. What's your neighborhood flow? Um, energetic, vibrant, family friendly. Uh, let's go energetic, vibrant. And then preferred body of water. This is a fun question. Um, let's go ocean. I think that sounds pretty nice right about now. It's really hot here. <laughs> and then what do you like to do when you're in the neighborhood? Uh, dog parks arts and culture, nightlife and bars. And let's just see what, what the results come up with. Just a fun little exercise to go through. I love a quiz. So then uh, the quiz spits out uh, a couple of different neighborhoods. You'll see there's a snapshot. They have um, schools in the area. So if you have kids, you can look at, okay, what are my education options? What are the attractions here? And since this is a uh, very Florida uh, water sources, what bodies of water are, are around this area? So this is a fun uh, tool to add to your site that really helps paint a picture and, and walk the user through an experience. And, and then I, show you. I love I love quizzes. Can you use this quiz for it's not just for locations? Could you do the same kind of principle for it, like upskilling or finding what company is right for you? Yes. Um, and we're actually I saw we have Upstate Alliance on the line right now. We're actually talking to them right now about doing something similar for upskilling. But Ooh. yes. This, this quiz actually can be adapted for a variety of different things. Um, it's sort of if you walk yourself through a user path experience of who might be coming to my site, what might they be looking for, this is the kind of thing that helps um, really drive them down the right path and in kind of a fun way. And then I'll just show you one last example. This is a cost of living calculator um, from Buffalo, Niagara, New York, uh, and their Be in Buffalo Town Attraction Initiative. So let's say moving from, uh, just to make me really depressed, let's go down and select New York, Brooklyn. Um, so you select uh, where you're coming from, and then the uh, moving to area is pre-populated for the city or the region. Uh, let's see, yeah, Brooklyn, there we go. New York, Brooklyn. Perfect, and then calculate. And this is all pulled through uh, C2ER's cost of living database. So it says my salary will go 48% further uh, in Buffalo than in, than in New York. 
So that's a pretty um, that's a pretty compelling stat. And then you can go through and expand these windows to see what um, groceries will be like. 26% less than in New York. Wow, that's crazy. Even looking at the line items, like you know, buying whole milk is a, is less expensive. Specifically, housing costs. I think that one's going to be a crazy one if you want to take a look at that one, Heather. 73% less. Oh my so gosh. Absolutely staggering. 73% less. Um, so this is the kind of tool that really paints a picture for the user, um, not just about, you know, cost of living as, as a vague concept, but as something they can really attach a number to and, and attach a feeling to. So those are uh, just a few tools um, that we have seen implemented recently as sort of a strategy in, in this time. Um, yeah, that's it. I think what's, what's so important about the cost tool, I mean, it was always important, but I recently saw this article that said people aren't moving because of COVID per se, they're moving because of cost or they will move because of cost. So I think something like this showing, hey, the housing 70% less, um, why not own? Um, I think that's so cool. Um, thank you, patients, awesome tools. Um, but as many cool tools and quizzes you can have on the website, you need to get the right people there. That's really has always been the problem with talent. Steve, um, talk to me about digital advertising. Yeah, and I just have to ca call out a comment uh, that came through, moving to Buffalo, bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, pretty funny there. Um, I so like, yeah, we've got- name. Someone used that as a campaign name, I love that. I know, right? Th that'd be great for Buffalo, so. Um, <laughs> uh, so now we have our fun tools and toys to play with. So um, how do we get people to use them? Uh, so that's what we'll talk a little bit about. Um, digital advertising is really the fastest, most direct, and most scalable way to um, really bring these tools or bring information that you have about your community to these people directly. And so we'll talk through a few of these things. Um, popular searches on Google certainly is, is kind of the most basic way to do so. Uh, we have some um, just some brief research that we've done around trending uh, search topics. The, the thing that we really love about digital marketing and digital advertising is the ability to stay super, super targeted and really make that dollar go farther. Uh, and and we've, we've done some campaigns with different uh, groups and, and we've really seen uh, the ability to hone in on your target audience is just so, um, it's strategic and it's so beneficial and it really re results in some great numbers. Um, and then we, we've seen a lot of groups be very um, hesitant about marketing, especially advertising, uh, for fear of being tone deaf. And so we have some reassuring uh, news on that. Uh, you definitely want to be sensitive to the moment right now, but at the same time, um, it's it's time to to release the hounds, so to speak, and uh, and get out there. So um, so we'll dive into some of these um, popular searches here. Um, Topics like best cities uh, in the US, best cities to live, things like that. Uh, those similar searches, uh, particularly domestic traffic, um, has really increased since March. Uh, so the last three bars there are March, April, May. So you've seen those go up um, with the, the high end in May really um, correlating with some summer and winter uh, search traffic there. Um, but we, you know, we have seen that increase as uh, um, a search term or search query, and believe it or not, it's not overly competitive right now. Um, and so there is an opportunity there as far as paid search. Uh, even thinking, you know, about best states to live, best cities to live, best towns to live. So not just best overall, but best to live. We've also seen those numbers tick up since March uh, when COVID really became a reality here in the U.S. Um, some other numbers for you. Um, you know, searches around particular topics. If you want to go to that next slide there, uh, Heather, um, you know, master's degree, he saw a huge spike in May. Um, and so, you know, as the reality of what are my career options really starts to set in, uh, we've seen a huge spike that is, is far and away the largest uh, in the last year plus. Um, when you look at going back to school, a huge spike in April and May. Um, now that could be a lot of things, but um, I, I think there's uh, certainly an argument there for that being 
correlated with people who have maybe lost their jobs and are looking to rethink their career. Um, and then we've got one more for you here. Um, the term upskilling saw a huge increase, a, a big bump by more than 50% in March. Uh, now it's since returned to normal, but um, it just underscores how the discussion around certain topics that are um, really coming out of this whole situation, uh, they're seeing a bump. And if you're if you're paying attention, if you're being strategic about this, there there are some opportunities to really take advantage through um, through organic search, but also through through paid search and and try to capture some of that traffic. Um, that is interested in some of these topics, whether it's finding jobs, upskilling, going back to school, whatever the case may be, there are opportunities out there. And so, um, you know, we just have this uh, this example. Uh, sounds like the upstate folks are are on the call. So uh, shout out to you guys. Um, engineering careers in Greenville, South Carolina, lovely, lovely city to uh, to live in. And, um, you know, seeing that ad uh, high up on the search terms um, to connect people with jobs, this takes them directly to a page that has engineering jobs uh, available on, on their website and allows them to track uh, how many people are, you know, how many jobs are being viewed as a result of this sort of activity. Um, but it's, it's a great way to take advantage of, you know, people maybe who have a connection with South Carolina. Uh, and perhaps that upstate area really saying, you know what, it's time to move back. Let me see what sort of engineering careers are there and then being connected directly with those opportunities. So that's paid search. Um, if you have additional money, uh, paid search can be really, you know, you, you can spend a little bit of money on that and it doesn't have to go too far. Um, you, can, you can certainly scale up, but certainly with the opportunities, the more um, strategic you're, you're you know, more keyword research you're doing, the more you can spend on that. Uh, the next level is um, still staying hyper-targeted, um, but finding ways to reach the audience that is most likely to engage with the information that you have to share. So um, you, you definitely want to think local first. Um, you know, that is where you're probably serving the best cause is unemployment is high across the board. How can we help connect, um, as, as we saw earlier, how can we help connect people, uh, whether it's high skill jobs, low skill jobs, doesn't matter. Um, how can we get people employed is the, is the biggest thing. And so if you have these tools or if you have information around this, how can you think local first? And do um, you, by, by local, do you mean, you know, if you're a city just within that city or is there a certain radius you feel like have, you've seen success with, with local ads? Yeah, it's a great. Great question. Um, I, I think I should say think regional first. Um, mm -hmm. And you may even want to think within a five hour radius, frankly, mm -hmm. um, which goes outside of a lot of regions. Um, people within a five hour radius are more likely to have a connection with your region, either through visiting, through college, uh, through family. Um, and so I think, you know, certainly think regional first is maybe the, the better way to put that. Um, but but to some extent, that five hour radius could be really advantageous for you. And doesn't matter um, if it's if your five hour radius crosses state lines or. I don't think so. Lines. Yeah. Yeah. People. It looks like people are willing to drive for the job. Exactly. So um, and it, it just it's less of a you know, you're not moving cross country. You're moving five hours away. Uh, chances are um, the cuisine, uh, the lifestyle, the. Uh, uh, the mentality of people is very similar, so it's just a less intimidating move overall. So, we would also suggest if you are going to go outside of that five hour radius, um, that you really look at some of those trends that we've already talked about a little bit. Um, people wanting to move closer to home, closer to family, places that they're familiar with. Um, cost of living is a, is a big uh, consideration to make here. So, capitalize on those trends and really get hyper targeted. Uh, you don't have to advertise within a five-hour radius or the whole country. You can actually get market-specific where you see feeder markets, where you see uh, higher cost of living markets, where you can potentially pull from. Uh, urban density is a, is a big uh, thing right now as well. Um, uh, I saw also uh, some of the other comments uh, from our poll earlier. There were a number that mentioned just, um, you know, I know people that have moved out of uh, you know, New York City in particular, not to not to call New York City out. I think any densely urban population 
um, people are going through a reevaluation. So how can you um, how can you take advantage of that to find people jobs in a in a way that um, it's a win win situation? That person gets a job, you get a new resident or a new family. Um, there there are some things to look at there. And then you know don't forget the motivations on, on it, from a messaging standpoint. Jobs matter, cost of living matters. Uh, so it's not just motivating people to reconsider. It's a way to pull them in from a messaging standpoint. Um, and that factual information uh, really means a lot in terms of um, you know grabbing their attention, getting them to visit your site. You have something of value that they need right now, and that's really important. Um, and then lastly here, uh, you know, in terms of um, being tone deaf, or are we actually being smart and strategic? Um, we did an, an, anal an analysis of both B2B and B2C uh, advertisements about a month ago, a month and a half ago almost, where um, you know COVID was still very much a, a situation um, as it is now, but other brands had started to move away from, um, you know, you still see some car commercials that are talking about tough times and things like that, but for the most part, what we saw, especially these, these happen to be all Facebook ads, we did look at across multiple channels, um, but you, what you saw was a return to some semblance of normalcy, not a, a feeling of obligation that you had to mention what was happening in the world, um, but just kind of sticking with your message and talking to your value proposition. And maybe the value proposition has changed a little nowadays. Maybe it's it uh, you are talking about things like cost and all of that. But if you have a clear advantage, talk about it. Be sensitive. Um, you know you don't want uh, you you don't see any pictures here with uh, large groups of people. Um, you know on the right here we have a, a, an example that's more relevant to communities. Uh, so Greater OKC um, sticking to a message that is very attractive, um, but the the imagery is, uh, you know, we don't have to have masks necessarily on your face, but uh, not large groups of people. You don't have copy that's talking about, you know, fun nightlife and uh, uh, great bars and restaurants and, mm -hmm. and things like that. You might want to hold back on that and wait for a better time. It doesn't Maybe mean you have to be out, straight though. summer. Yes, there you go. Great takeout. <laughs> um, but you, you don't have to remain silent because you can't mention that. Mm -hmm. But we do recommend that you... Um, that you certainly you know get in the game and stick to your value proposition and be sensitive with the imagery that you're using. I love it. Lead with the information. If I see one more car commercial trying to make me cry <laughs> about the pandemic and then buy a car, I'm sorry. No, I'm sad already. Just give me the information. Um, exactly. Well, lastly here, number three, and people, please um, get ready for questions. We'll we'll have time for that at the end here, but. I'll let Heather Gantz um, and Ashley O'Connor talk about connecting job seekers virtually. Absolutely, thank you, Rebecca. So one example of a virtual talent event um, that we have here in particular is actually a virtual career fair. Now, why this is a very viable option, of course, during COVID, it's virtual, but we actually see this as an opportunity beyond COVID-19 restrictions as well. Um, as we saw in the trends, we are moving toward an increasingly larger um, remote workforce. And it's also a great opportunity to get in front of just talent and outside markets that might not be able to come see you physically. Um, so I'll show you on the right hand side of this screen actually is a real virtual career fair that we did just last month um, with Fairfax County Economic Development Authority. Um, now this career fair was particularly for new grads um, and a couple of the results that we saw from it 13 employers from the region participated, um, almost 1,000 attendees from over 30 schools and universities in the area, um, and it resulted in over 900 conversations, completed conversations between job seekers and HR reps, which is pretty cool. Um, and so how we got, a few ways that we got those results, I'll show you on the left hand of the screen, is by some pretty creative promotion um, outreach strategies. The first being, of course, social media. Um, the second, media blitz, we wanted to make sure we got as much media attention as possible. Um, strategic outreach, that might look like 
um, going to organizations or associations that are relevant to your target audience, places that they might be. Um, and then of course, as we just heard from Steve, digital advertising. Um, and that is a great tool as we learned as well to reach that outside market if you want to attract them to your open jobs that are hiring in your region. Um, how we did this particular fair um, was with a platform, a virtual fair platform called Brazen. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Ashley and she's going to talk to you a bit about Brazen, how a virtual fair platform might work, um, maybe different fairs that you could host if it might be a good fit um, and that kind of thing. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass over um, the presenter mode to Ashley and she will take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. And, and you know, again, great to be here. Um, also looking at Buffalo to move there potentially, um, though the winter <laughs> sounds a little rough. Um, so, you know, let me tell you a little bit about Brazen. So we specialize in virtual recruitment. And so we work with two types of audiences, employers directly. So this is an example of what you're seeing here of a client in Florida, if there's anyone on here from Florida, Advent Health, although they are a national employer. And we've been working with clients like Advent Health, I've been at Brazen for nine years, for a long time to help them connect and engage with candidates who are both in and outside the region. Now, a client like Advent Health, being in Florida, has always had that desire to attract talent from outside the area. Um, we work with another school district that I'll show you in Florida doing the same thing. So this concept of recruiting talent from outside an area and trying to position what you offer as an employer beyond just a job is something that we at Brazen have been helping clients do pre-COVID before we even knew what coronavirus was. And a tool like ours has been really helpful because at the end of the day, what, what it means to be a matchmaker, I think Rebecca, that was one of the four or five new things that place marketers, you know, their mission. Um, matchmaking is about conversations. And so a website is phenomenal. Those calculators are all amazing. Um, what we add to it is an actual conversation. And so when you think about moving what, for a house, for a school, for a job, those conversations are so critical. And so any client we've had that has had a mission of not only using a virtual event to kind of break through the noise and make it super easy to engage really passive um, competitive talent it's also uh, been a really good vehicle to have those critical conversations when they're trying to get someone to really consider a big move not only in their job but in you know where they currently live so advent health is a great example of just always showing like hey we're open for conversations whether you're here in florida or not we have a variety of virtual chat sessions um, uh, kind of flipping script here to a you know, same state, Florida, uh, but looking at a public school district. Um, this is Lake County Public School District. So also before COVID, um, they've always done events with us. And one of them specifically is targeting teachers from outside of Florida. Any market like healthcare, education, finance, even manufacturing, where the labor market is so tight, a lot of these employers have simply tapped out of talent in the area, you know, hence why we're talking about this today. So this is another great example of a, an employer kind of taking the reins themselves and saying, we're gonna do an event, we're gonna target people from outside the area. And what I loved about this example is that they brought in not only the schools where you could actually chat with the principal from a school that you may work at if you move there, they also brought in real estate partners, they brought in different people to talk about certifications in Florida and what, you know, any reciprocity that might exist between education certifications. Um, and, you know, other clients have brought in other types of partners, you know, DMOs or other organizations who can add a voice to the other elements that round out the life of a, of a job in Florida. And so I love this example as well. And so I think where all of you have the opportunity is you know, be the matchmaker for all those employers in the area. You know, the one big benefit that Fairfax County was able to provide the employers who attended that event is that they're piggybacking off each other. So maybe I'm not interested in a public school district, or maybe I wouldn't be interested in a healthcare um, if I was marketed that event by those employers, but maybe like Fairfax, 
if there was an opportunity to speak to five or 10 unique employers, that changes the game. And for your employers who maybe don't have a really strong brand uh, themselves, but you have other strong brands in the market, the, the collective power of everyone coming together to saying, here's our local economy, here are the jobs we have. You may have never heard of this company, but you're attracted to this event because of this company, just that piggybacking of brands off other brands to really help round out that it's not just one employer. We have startups, we have small businesses, we have employers who you may have never heard of, but in fact offer competitive salaries, amazing benefits. And that's the real benefit of doing this at more of the place level. So when Fairfax County did this event, it was not just one employer, Brazen included, but it was several, you know, Northrop Grumman, who probably needs no help marketing their employer brand, but some of these other clients who students maybe have never heard of that now got some exposure to, uh, to those candidates because they may have been attracted by some of the larger brands here. So this is the inside of an online event. So as a candidate, what Fairfax County did is marketed this event um, as Northern Virginia it was a Fairfax County Economic Development Authority. And so they worked with DCI to create those campaigns that Rebecca talked about to really go out and social and say, hey, we're doing a career fair. We have leading companies here ready to chat with you. And so they got individuals to sign up for that event. They captured all that data for those employers to be able to remarket and retarget moving forward. And then inside the event, as a candidate, I was able to go into each specific employer, learn more about that employer specifically, learn more about the opportunities that employer has. And when this event is live, there was a big green chat button that said, talk with ACTA, talk with Portia, actually have that human human connection. You know, I think employers already sometimes get a bad rap for that resume black hole. So if you think about the resume black hole being daunting to apply for a job in your area, you know, imagine that feeling when you're applying for a job outside the area. So opening up that line of communication and really humanizing and personalizing the process is a huge win for these employers. And then again, being able to do that in the collective power of all your local employers to attract you know, what you have to offer as a group versus just one individual. So I know we want to leave some time for questions. Um, I'll kick it back over to you, but happy to spend more time talking about other clients we've seen do this, um, other success we've had, and any you know uh, resources I might be able to point you guys to to consider this on your own. Thanks, Ashley. That was awesome. Um, I feel like the, the key theme you were saying is that we just want to save people time. That's what place marketers can do is save the job seeker time, save your employer's time. Um, we'll wrap it up here and we'll open it up for questions. Um, this is Ashley, actually, what is the cost to host a virtual job fair? The cost ranges, probably not the answer you wanna hear, um, but it what we do is charge you, the, the model is based on um, how many employers you have. So if you said, we have 20 employers, we wanna do five events over the next year, it would be 100 employer slots we'd charge you for. Cost ranges anywhere from like 10,000 at the low end. We have entire states like the state of Texas, the state of Michigan, the state of Ohio who are working with us. You can imagine those contracts are much larger um, because they're looking at each individual region and letting them each do five, 10 events each. Um, so somewhere in between you know, 10,000 probably at the starting point and then working your way up to um, you know larger six-figure contracts if there's a you know larger entity um, like a state level doing this. Good to know and great question. And that actually leads us to our our takeaways here. Um, and please use the question um, section as we're going through these. But um, on the next slide here, I wanted each of our experts to say something that each of you can actually start next week. Like I don't think people are going to find ten thousand dollars next week but what can you start and um maybe just asking your employers what budget are you spending on virtual career fairs or what's the money you would have spent on a fair that you're not spending are you willing to do it collectively and actually i don't know if there's anything else you want to say what that people can start in terms of budget for that yeah you know a good starting point might be to ask your local employers if they had a line item in their budget for out-of-state recruitment events 
Mm. Um, you know, a lot of them have line items for campus recruitment events um, or for other, you know, other types of recruiting that they may already have another solution in the virtual world. But if we think about the places they were going out of state and a lot of our healthcare clients, a lot of our um, education clients, they, they go nationally if the jobs warrant that, you know, if they're hard to fill positions. So those will likely all be canceled. So that leaves a big, nice travel budget that you can work with. So I would talk with your employers about what out of state recruitment efforts they were planning. What does that budget look like? And would they be, you know, mm. interested in reallocating those resources to something that the place marketers could host and getting that pool together and then again, leveraging everyone together and the power of that piggybacking off other employers could be a huge win to each person, each employer individually. Great, good point. Um, patience, very quickly, for digital tools, what's something people can start just next week? Oh, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I just got the pop-up reminder, I was on mute. Um, so, so I think, um, you know, starting with your budget, I think is a great place to see, you know, what room you might have to augment your digital presence. Um, and then from there, taking stock of what you have, whether you have a talent attraction site, whether you have a space um, on your EDO site or your DMO site that speaks to this. Um, and just looking at ways that you can improve it, whether that's implementing one of these tools, like a cost of living calculator or a jobs board. Um, or just taking a look at your content and making sure that you're emphasizing these themes that we've been talking about. Um, you know, money, jobs, cost of living, all really important themes to be uh, capitalizing on right now. Um, and just on the topic of budget, those um, app tools that we mentioned, um, those are around 4,600 to implement one of those on your site. And then it would be a $2,000 per year licensing fee to keep it up to date. So for example, the cost of living calculator is pulling in data from C2ER, so that would cover that. But even if you don't have um, any extra change around um, taking a look at your staff internally and whether you have some capacity right now to be augmenting your SEO and your content strategy. Great. Um, and Steve, um, what can someone start next week? And then I have a good question here for you. Uh, I, I got stuck on mute as well. Um, Life <laughs> on mute. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so yes, um, number one, I, I would unpause your digital campaigns if you're still pausing them. And that goes for organic as well as paid. Um, it, it's time to get out there. As we mentioned, uh, be cognizant of imagery, be cognizant of what you're saying. If it feels wrong, don't go for it. But um, in, in, in a large sense, um, it's time to get back into the game. And so if you do have things still pause out of any concern for uh, sensitivity and whatnot, um, just reevaluate and then push play on it again. And I, I see the question, um, Rebecca, that, uh, that came through just in terms of um, metrics to measure digital programs, mm -hmm. digital ads. Uh, you know, so many people want this direct correlation of we place these ads, now where's the new talent? Um, what do you report back to your board and other stakeholders? And so, um, you know, some things that we've done is, uh, you know, the, the great part about digital advertising and, and digital programs in general is that you can tie everything back to uh, hard numbers and what people are doing on your website. So um, some metrics that we um, have had for Fairfax County and, and some of the examples that we've shown here, um, 5,400 job views were generated from a, a digital ad program. Uh, 1,200 outbound links to those companies' websites. Uh, so that's people that are interested in that company. They want to learn more, and so they're going. We're able to track that. Um, and while it's a much smaller number and wasn't necessarily a goal of the program, uh, 150 people clicked on the uh, Upgrade a Career uh, link. And so looking at those retraining, those upskilling opportunities. Uh, so those are all things that can be tracked um, and, and would kind of be that low-hanging fruit to measure. Uh, there are some more advanced tools that would allow a feedback mechanism from the companies um, where you can start to measure qualified interviews, uh, jobs, et cetera, but they tend to be a little bit more um, of an investment and it does require that feedback loop from companies which uh, just, you know, we found that EDOs, they may know their companies, but they don't know them necessarily that well where they're uh, spending the time to do feedback. So it does, um, require some buy-in from from your your corporate partners. Hmm. That's a great one, Steve. Um, 
some examples of feedback tools that I just got this question. So can we give some examples of feedback tools? Um, Patience, do you want to talk about ACS really quickly and your concept for that? Sure. Um, so some of our clients are looking at how to actually pull in an applicant tracking system from one of their employers or multiple of their employers um, onto their website, which will enable further tracking abilities. So basically with the Indeed jobs board that we showed you, once the individual clicks off to Indeed, we have very little ability to track, you know, did they apply? How far did they make it in the process without um, some sort of a feedback loop? Um, if your employer, your local employers have a feed on their site already that is location specific. Um, so for example, in, in Northern Virginia, if they have Northern Virginia jobs um, at Amazon, their new HQ2, they do have a page for that. So that's something that we're able to actually port in uh, via a lightweight API onto the website. And that allows us basically to track the entire process or as much as the company is willing to give us access to all the way up until did this person click to did they actually get hired? So that's another way that we've been looking into um, increased tracking abilities, but it's really all about um, getting that partnership with the company because that's super key. Awesome. And let's get to number five here, Heather, um, something people can start next week. And we still have one minute left for questions if anyone has other questions for the chat box. Yeah, really quickly, one thing that you could start next week is to just show Gen Z in your area some love. As we saw in the headlines, they are reeling. Um, they entered a workforce that is unrecognizable, uncertain, something that they couldn't have prepared for. So a couple of ways that might look like um, maybe a dedicated part of your website to entry level jobs or internships that are still open in your area. Um, a blog post with some resources, or um, if you can, maybe even hosting a, a virtual networking mixer or something like that. Um, definitely now is the time to try and retain that fresh young talent while most of them are honestly home. Um, so show Gen Z some love. That's my takeaway. Love it. And thank you everyone um, for joining. We're at our hour here. Um, the last thing I want to leave you with is this quote. Um, you know, talent, we're hearing from sites like there's will still be an issue. Um, people will need people like you to market the place. Um, and something my friend, the editor in chief at Livability, Winona, um, said is that she remembers the last recession that Nashville wasn't all that. And that's actually when they started marketing and going after it when everyone else was sleeping. And that just really opened my eyes to think like, wow, who is going to be the next Nashville? Um, so just something to keep in mind and thanks for your questions, everyone. Thank you for your time. We will absolutely reach out to answer your questions if we didn't get them here today. Um, thank you everyone. Stay safe. Um, try to have a little fun along the way. This summer we'll have new research. Please feel free to email us um, if you want to make sure you get that report. Thank you everyone. Thanks everyone. Everyone, thanks, everyone. goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>